Hey everybody, this is Sully from Five Freaking Onion Rings and I'm doing a follow-up video to something I did last year on misophonia. And if you don't know what that is, that's a condition where you hear small sounds and they overtake your entire existence for that moment. Um, it'll be someone nose breathing, mouth chewing, open mouth chomping, and it takes over to a point that it drives you into a fit of rage. And I'm not talking like, oh, I hate it when people, you know, chew with their mouth open. It drives me so crazy. No, I'm talking like uncontrollable, won't reach over and slap someone upside the head like your mama did back in the first grade whenever you were crossing the road without looking both ways. That type of fit of rage, just pow! Right across it, that's what I'm talking about. Fit of rage, okay? And that's just from hearing someone, like in this video, I can hear that I have too much saliva in the back of my mouth. That type of noise in a one-on-one -on -one situation would drive me to the point where I'm literally shaking, trying to calm down, trying to breathe, fit of rage, okay? And what I wanted to do in this video is lay out some coping mechanisms that do not rely on alcohol, weed, or antipsychotic drugs or medications. ADHD meds are often prescribed and some other things are. That um, personally, I just, I don't like drugs that much on any form, any level. Um, it's one of those, uh, I don't know. Now, I'm not saying that some people don't need them, and I'm not even saying that I don't need them, because it is a chemical imbalance that causes this, but there are coping mechanisms if you are, um, if you're open to trying. And some of the things that work for me, I have a few, and I'm going to lay them out here. Some of the things that work for me, and some of the things that don't work for me, or what causes it to be worse than others, I always try to get enough sleep, Anything less than five hours will put me on edge already, and that will cause me to hear everything amplified out of the yin-yang, completely just drive me crazy. Lack of sleep will do it. If I'm stressed out of my head and I haven't had a break or I haven't had, um, you know, just time off, that will do it. If I'm hungry and I have to watch it, you know, it's like a blood sugar imbalance. If it gets too high, too low, either one, I will just get really crabby and that will trigger it. I have found that overhead lights, that's one that's kind of hard to avoid in an office, but direct overhead lights that will make the condition a lot worse. I try to use lamps, I try to keep side lights on or something else, use windows, natural lights, what have you. But overhead lights is one that's weird and it might just be overhead fluorescent lights. I use LEDs now and I don't notice it as much. But um, overhead lights, that's one. If I'm one-on-one -on -one in a situation with someone, I have another person in a the room, they're doing something, eating, chewing, shuffling papers or whatnot, and there's no background noise. So I try to keep a fan on, I try to keep music playing, I try to keep some humming going on in the background. By humming, I mean a fan, or my computer running, or a laptop, something small that will just give low-grade noise on uh, just a low-grade noise that will keep me from focusing on every little hair they have in their nose while they're breathing. As far as other coping mechanisms, some people use earplugs. I personally find that they are awful for me because once you blank out all of the extraneous noise, all I focus on is the one thing that's going to drive me crazy. I can't work with earplugs in because I will hear the scratching of paper with a pen through my office door, outside, across the cubicle, I will hear it. And that's just because you've blocked out every other sensation that I have in my ears. And it forces me to pick up on small things. With that being said, I avoid having noises that are directed toward me. Um, I will angle my office door so that whatever's outside actually bounces off the door, comes across, and hits my computer and not me. So if I shift over, I can hear it. I'll keep it angled or I'll keep it shut. But once again, I can't keep it shut all the time if I don't have some internal noise because then I will focus on what's external. This is like if I'm trying to sleep at night, my wife uses a CPAP machine. And I, that's, that's been a blessing for me because that's just straight white noise. I used to have to sleep with earplugs or I'd have to sleep with music on. And if I slept with earplugs and someone's in there, you know, if, if someone's making any noise, rattling, shuffling, 
whatever it is, if I hear a drip downstairs or outside or across the street or across the hall, doesn't matter. I can hear it once all the other noise is out of the way. So to recap, biggest things for me personally in dealing with this, get enough sleep. That's something I struggle with every day. I'm a night owl. I'm actually a night owl. <laughs> this is funny. I'm a night owl because I don't like to be around people that much because it's physically painful and I want to strangle someone for making noises. It's not their fault. I mean, they're, they're living. I, I do it to someone else. You put two people with misophonia in the same room, they'll probably kill each other. Not kidding. Not joking. Kind of sad, but not joking. But what I will do, um, I try to get sleep. I try to avoid one-on-one -on -one encounters without background noise. So I always have to have something going on. You know, construction zones are actually very nice for me because uh, it's nice, it's like beep beep, you know, loud noises. Loud noises don't bother me, it's the silent, soft ones. Someone else suggested that um, it's a certain range of noises, 50 to 250 hertz. Possibly, I don't know, I've never experimented with that, but I would not doubt it based on the ones that trigger me. Food, make sure you, you know, you're not hungry, keep a few snacks, some protein, nuts, uh, <laughs> nuts nuts. Um, protein or walnuts. I, I like walnuts and almonds. Um, sleep, food. Try to avoid one-on-one -on -one situations in silent areas because you will focus on every other person. Movie theaters are awful for me, so I've been actually trying to go to them more often, but I've found that we go to one that's a little bit nicer and they actually serve food instead of just popcorn because if I go to one with just popcorn, that will drive me insane, um, just hearing someone chomp on popcorn. I don't mind a lot of people eating a lot of different foods and, you know, buffets. Restaurants don't bother. Um, but what I do mind is, like, a person sitting next to me chewing, chewing popcorn, uh, which sucks because I love popcorn. Uh, other than that, like I say, food, sleep, try to keep your mind clear, take breaks. Sometimes you just got to walk out, walk away. Um, take breaks from work if you're overstressed. Stress definitely will, will push it. Shoot, I gotta start this all over again. But to recap, things that I avoid. I avoid not getting enough sleep. Eat, uh, try not to go too long, let your blood sugar dip. That will set you on edge, and once you're on edge, you will again focus on everything that drives you crazy. Keep your stress levels down. I personally take yoga. I teach yoga for the same reason. Breathe in, breathe out. Keep your stress down. That's work stress. That's, you know, if I'm working on a problem, I like to build computers, you know, very simple things. But when something goes wrong and I have to troubleshoot, I'll end up, um, I have to get away from people and it's, it's very hard to do with one other person around. I actually stay in crowds more than I do one-on-one -on -one because the crowd has an overload of sensations and I can't focus on just one sound. Um, let's see, food sleep, stress. Caffeine is another one. Uh, I'm an avid coffee drinker. I love it. But the caffeine in that just keeps me kind of boosted a little bit. What does not work for me is if I drink soft drinks. And I cut these out years ago and I couldn't be more happy that I did. Because for some reason, a few soft drinks, it's the sugar and the caffeine at the same time sets me on edge. Um, once I was married, you know, we went to a place and it's like, ooh, let's get a, a combo. You know, you want a soft drink and some fries with a, a gyro at a Greek place. And I love, I love cheer wine. Cheer wine and Dr. Pepper is like two of my favorite things. And I drank a couple and it was immediate change in personality. It was change in how I felt about everything. And I could suddenly hear the wings of a mosquito flapping 50 yards away. And at that point, I realized I was on edge and it was about to be a bad situation. Other than those, it's, it's merely figuring out what really sets you off and trying to cope with that situation. Family dinners are always a problem for me. So I learned if I turn the radio on, I can just focus on the music. If I can get a conversation going, I like to joke around a lot. Um, if I can get a conversation going and something's funny and hilarious, you know, and then eat between that and have people uh, having a hard time just keeping up with a steady amount of eating, I do that. Uh, what else? I avoid things like the movie theater, although I'm going to more often. 
Recap in general, sleep, food, stress, just breathe, just relax, find your trigger points and figure out how to overcome what you're hearing. So it, for me, that's white noise, you know, it just it masks what I'm hearing. I can't use earplugs because that amplifies the small noises. It'll cut out all the background noises, which is great, but then I'm suddenly isolated like I'm underwater with only one thing to fixate on. So earplugs don't work for me. White noise, fans, music, that stuff does. Um, anyway, if you have any questions, I've linked my old video in here. I've put some links down below that will cover, um, you know, Zemisophonia, Selective Sound Disorder, websites, some more information. Um, if you do find that nothing works for you and you have to get drugs, nobody's going to judge you. So do what you have to do. Uh, for me, I, I try not to, but... I mean, it's it can be tough sometimes, especially if you work in the public or you work around other people. And other than that, if this was in any way helpful, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you deal. I would love to hear some more stress, you know, some more coping mechanisms. Let me know, you know, how you feel about it. Just let me know. And I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Um, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button if you want to just get some random info. Just hit subscribe. Um, if you want to follow along, leave a like, comment. Thanks again. Appreciate everybody. And hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks a lot.